What is up y'all? It is Onye. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing six insider tips from a social media manager. Yep, that's me. I am a social media manager slash consultant slash freelance photographer slash influencer slash all the things. But today I am your social media manager sharing all of the goods. No need to delay. Let's hop right into it. Tip number one, if you've ever wondered what brands are looking for when it comes to collaborations, I'm about to drop the goods right now, so be ready. They're looking at engagement, of course, real engagement, quality. Are you coming out with quality images, quality video? Frequency, are you a posted and ghosted type of content creator? Or, or do you have an active presence on whatever platform you're using, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, whatever? Are you posting consistently? Consistency doesn't mean every day, it just means that you have a consistent pattern that you stick to. You're not a poster and ghoster. Um, your scope, by that I mean two things, like your niche, like what are, what topics are you covering? Does it relate to this brand? And two, how far reaching are you in terms of the social media atmosphere? Are you on Pinterest? Do you have a blog? Do you have a YouTube? When you're on multiple platforms, I think you're a bit more attractive to brands because you know if you have a blog, that means that your, your content is searchable, et cetera, et cetera. Your location, where are you based? I know when I was working um, at Wet n Wild, we were based in LA. So a lot of times we would look for influencers that were based in LA, if not for brand collaborations and to invite you to an event we were having. Tip number two, we are constantly looking for new influencers and new content creators to work with. I know in my previous experience, like whenever we had a new campaign, the first thing we would look for is like new faces. Yeah, of course we will want those one or two bigger familiar faces that we know can deliver, but we also wanted to serve up fresh new talent. So don't count yourself out if you're like a micro influencer, if you've never had a campaign before, like you're still in the running. Additionally, I would always keep my eyes open for up and coming talent. What does that mean? So those influencers that, you know, don't have a ton of followers, but they're creating great quality content, they're consistent, they're on multiple platforms, they have high engagement, those type of people you already know if they keep at it are going to be big, they're going to be huge. And it's important for us as like social media managers and brands to form those connections when they're just getting started. So I mean, they, they remember us when they make it big. Like you remember, remember when you only had like two followers and we was there, we was there for you. Next tip, if you do not ask to get paid, don't expect the brand to bring it up. We're not going to, we're just going to assume like, oh, she's so sweet. She's doing it for free. She's making a video, posting some pictures, coming to our event all for free. Mm -hmm. We sure will. We try for let me tell you. So make sure you make it abundantly clear what your rates are and what you're expecting in exchange for any collaboration that you do. Uh, next tip, I mentioned this one earlier, but if you live in the same city as a brand, like for example, I know NYX is out here, Wet n Wild is out here, Morphe is out here, Milani's out here. So those are brands that if I'm an influencer and I live in LA, I would try to establish a relationship with them because at the very least, you may get invited to their events. You never know what that can, you know, mature into if you start showing your face at their events. Last but definitely not least, be protective or be be aware of your presence and how you're portraying yourself online. Now, this is not to say you should go out and be fake or be prim and proper. Like, no, be yourself. But know that brands are watching and know that the way you behave could potentially exclude you from conversations when it comes to brand collaboration. I'll give you an example. When I was working for a beauty brand in the past, we had an influencer PR list. And there was one influencer who I followed and I just noticed that every post was just clickbait. Every post she did was clickbait. And on a personal level, it disturbed me, but just on behalf of the brand, like I just, I wanted no parts of that, none. So she got removed, honestly and truly. No shade, but girl, bye. That just goes to show you that, you know, you want to present yourself in a way that is attractive to brands, point blank and the period. Some brands may be okay with clickbait. They don't care. I care, y'all, I care. So that is it. I think that was six, possibly five. I don't know, but you got it. Um, I hope they were helpful. If you did learn anything from this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Even if you didn't, just show me some love. And until next time, toodles.